What's up? What is going on, everybody? This is Chris from Out West with Chris. I have been traveling. My house is a total disaster. Um, I have a bunch of camping gear and boxes to put away or do something with. As you can tell, my house is just a total wreck. I got rod tubes over here. I've got a box that I need to open. Good evening, Ray. What's going on, Brayden? So because of all that, um, I just got back into town yesterday. I had uh, this sitting on my doorstep. I've got a ton of videos to edit. What's going on, everybody? Um, got a ton of videos to edit, but I still need to do my unboxing for my Mission 41 Battle Box. Figured I could try something new and not have to edit. So this is this is kind of due to laziness for me. Um, so yeah, that's, that's gonna, that's just cutting to it. I'm, I'm being kind of lazy. <clears throat> hey, Sam. Hey, Ray. Nothing new. I know I'm just a lazy bum. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's go ahead and do that. But first in the seven K <laughs> fireman Swanee, total loser, um, fireman Swanee, What's going on, buddy? I I um I want to give you a call, Brayden. I don't know. We'll have to see, man. We'll have to see. Um, okay. Let's go ahead and pick a winner of a knife. Uh, we're gonna be giving away the Black Scout Survival Feather Stick, which is uh, too small for my hands. Look at this. Look at this knife. It's really cool. Don't get me wrong. Nice knife, retails, I think MSRP is about 150. Um, pretty cool sheath. Anyways, we're gonna be giving this away and we're gonna be giving away this knife, which is awesome. This is the DMF folder from Sniper Blade Works. Comes in a pretty cool case too. So we're gonna pick the winners. We're gonna pick the winner of the feather stick right now, then we're gonna do the unboxing. And we'll just do all that fun stuff. Now, um, I don't know if you guys can tell. You probably can't. But this is a whole new setup uh, for going live on YouTube. Uh, they changed it since the last time I went live on my desktop. So I don't know if I can share my screen or not. Um, I'm going to have to mess around with it for a second and see if I can share my screen. Part of me thinks I might not be able to, which, you know what, that's going to be sad. Um, I guess you'll just have to trust me that uh, we go ahead and that, you know, that this is all legit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the link to the 7K video. You had to comment on that. I'm going to snag that really quick. And we're going to go to a random comment picker. That's where I'm at now. I'm going to insert the link. Um, find the link. 49 comments. I'm going to pick a name. I should have my phone on me, but I don't. Um, the winner is S-C-I-L-A-N-D-1. Skyland one, Skyland one. Um, so what I'm going to do is I am going to comment, reply to their thing, um, and let them know that they won the feather stick, and we'll go from there. So that's that. <clears throat> Ray, you have won so many giveaways. Well, you've won a, quite a few giveaways. So, what's up, video addict? How's it going, man? Um, I was going to contact you today too, but you know, I, I, you know, when you go on vacation, you know, when you go on vacation, you work your butt off, right. To get ready to go. Like you're working 50, 60 hours that prior week, just to get ready to go on vacation. You go on vacation and you come back and there's more work than when you left. That's my life right now. And that's, that's all good. It's nothing I complain about. I, I love my job and um, all that stuff. So Derek, you're not going to be able to 
um, enter anymore. Um, well, if you're really quick, you could go to the last live video I did. It's titled 7K Thank You Impromptu, something like that. Um, and you'll be able to just comment on that. And I'm, I'm the, if you comment, you know, you might get a shot at this huge folder. So let's go ahead and dive right in to battle box mission 41. This, uh, this is a kind of a cool different theme for the month, um, of July, the month of July, the last this year and last year, um, the folks at battle box have been kind of focusing on veteran owned companies and, other than that, I don't really know what's going on with this box. I don't know what's in it. Um, I do know the knife of the month. I should rephrase that. Um, and it's a knife of the month I already own. And we can kind of talk about it a little bit. So, got to show yourself opening it, right? Um, ah, one more piece of tape. But anyways, I had a great time. I, I see my number of viewers dropped off a little bit. Now they're coming back. Welcome back, guys. Welcome back. Um, I had a great time uh, this past week camping and fishing and just hanging out on my parents' farm and, you know, just doing all that stuff. It was a, a really relaxing week. So, hey, W Strange or DW Strange, you're welcome. Um, you know, I, I like doing those tent videos, something I enjoy. <clears throat> Video looks like it shot through a pair of pantyhose. You need a better internet connection. Come on, man. Just teasing. Um, okay. So mission 41 freedom box, July, 2018, um, land of the free because of the brave. And one thing that's cool about BattleBox, uh, they do something called the Just One Project. Um, and I, I think I can find a link somewhere where you can actually donate money to this project. But some of the proceeds from the box uh, this month, the sales, go to the Just One Project. And what they do is they find uh, one really deserving veteran, um, somebody who's either down on their luck or is trying to do something, um, who could use a little bit of a hand. And instead of giving you know, a bunch of money spread out over, you know, 10,000 people, they give 10,000 bucks or something like that. You know, they give a good chunk of money to one person to really help change their life. So, um, portions go to that. Um, Hey, child, sir, I understand it's, it's all good. Um, thank you for stopping by. But portions of the proceeds from this box go to that. And then, you know, you can also donate and stuff like that. So let's go ahead. Basic box, um, $24.99 as usual, $65.37 value. Okay. I got to find all this stuff. Okay. Um, what we have here is the first item. This is the Tacticon Halo Gun Magnet. It's a two-pack. U.S. veteran-owned company, um, 1995 value. So I I don't have much familiarity with this, <clears throat> but what I think it is is uh, some really high-powered magnets that you could screw essentially maybe underneath a desk, um, you know, someplace safe. But uh, take these magnets, stick them or screw them someplace, and then um, you've got a spot to, to basically hold a, a firearm. So um, that's pretty interesting. Jeez, these are strong magnets too. They just want to attach to each other because, you know, that's what magnets do. All right. So that is your first item. Whew. Okay, the second item, um, AR 504-inch gong target from Shooting Targets, S7.com, a vet-owned, made in Michigan, 1197. Um, this is great. Where, where are you? Where are you, gong? Oh, there goes a big fly. I don't know if you saw that. Get out of here. Shoot fly. Okay. So this is a, a gong target, and I'm happy to get this. Um, 
basically you take this and you hang it out in the range and you shoot at it and it hits it right if you're a good shot um for me this is kind of a, a thing that is useful because i like to shoot on blm land uh bureau of land management not a dong target ray come on now <coughs> bureau of land management uh property and they just recently came out with some rules that you can't use like paper targets and it, they, they basically you have to have a permanent target built okay um and basically what they're trying to do is cut out on trash because a lot of times people who go shooting don't pick up after themselves um and you know that type of stuff so the blm in my area um you have to have a permanent stand um, you couldn't shoot like a cardboard box. You couldn't take like a pallet and staple targets to it or anything like that. So this is uh, pretty useful for me. What's up, buddy? Okay, next up is a $30 value Survival Summit Active Shooter DVD featuring Tim Kennedy from Sheepdog Response. So there you go. Active shooter uh, training DVD. That's interesting. It says, in this you will learn gun fundamentals, stress-induced firearm training, eliminating the threat, situational awareness, caring for wounded, uh, legal issues, thoughts from an officer, and office shooter takedown. Um, I don't know. Has anybody looked at this yet? Not Black Lives Matter, Ray. Bureau of Land Management. Has anybody watched this yet? Has anybody seen this? Let me know what you uh, have thought about it. If you've seen it, what do you guys think? <coughs> Excuse the cough. Okay. Uh, Rand COP, six ounce firearm cleaner, lubricant and protectant. Vet owned, made in Connecticut. $3.50. That is right here. So... Um, you know, it's a CLP. So there you go. Rand CLP. Is everything backwards? Like, are the letters backwards for you guys? I'm curious. I'm just curious. Are they backwards? <sighs> Anyways. Um, you know... Straight, great. So, uh, CLPs like th they are what they are. It's three dollar and fifty cent uh, value. Um, that's cool. Okay, thanks, guys. That's good to know. Um, the next up is a just one project PVC morale patch, and it has a value of free. Um, let's take a look at it. I'm a patch guy. I like patches. Nice PVC patch. Just one project, and that is. Um, the, the thing that I was talking to you guys about earlier, the just one project. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Tanker, I'm telling you, you got to get a better internet connection. <laughs> you know, I kind of thought that too, uh, DW Strange, but I don't know. Okay, so that's your basic box. Kind of looking over it, some interesting items. Um, the DVD, you know, something to learn with. Um, really like the steel. I think that's a great uh, thing in a basic box. 65, 37 value. Um, yeah, you know, that seems fairly reasonable for paying 25 bucks for it. So let's move on to the advanced two items. Um, 44, 49.99. It costs you the value 150. The first item. $65 value from the Rustic Flag Company, a just one project edition desktop flag. This is a veteran owned, made in Tennessee, veteran owned company made in Tennessee. I haven't seen this yet, but man, that is cool. Look at that, guys. That's awesome. And on the back, 
that's cool. So, of course, you could hang it. Um, uh, there might be a little stick to, to put it on the desk. Yeah, it comes with a dowel um, so that you can insert there and prop it up and sit it on a desk. I'm stoked about this. Um, I've seen some, some big ones, some bigger, nicer ones of these. Well, not nicer, but just larger. And I'm stoked to have one of my own. That's really cool. Really stoked about this. $65 value, made in Tennessee. That's that's pretty cool. Whew. <clears throat> it's hot today. It's really hot today. It's about 105 today. Um, I'm still trying to get acclimated to um, being indoors. Okay. The Ben Shop Bulletproof Just One Project Glass made in Wisconsin, $20 value. Um, so this is this is like solid copper lead free bullet. Oh, look at that. That's pretty cool. Look at this. <laughs> look at that. Oh, that's pretty neat, man. Kind of like that cool glass to put some whiskey in, some bourbon. It's got the Just One Project logo on it. I'll drink to that. That's cool. Um, $20 value. Let's take a shot. What's up, Marvin? What's going on, man? If you guys like the kayak fishing side of the channel, uh, Marvin Outdoors is a cool dude. Um, check him out. He's he's uh, he has fun, and that's what I like about his channel. Um, not, you know, he catches fish too, so that's always entertaining. But um, man, that dude is funny, and he's got a great attitude. So I, I like I like Marvin from Mobbin Outdoors. Good dude. Yeah, no problem, man. Hey, Braden, I really do want to do a grass burner video. Um, <clears throat> I kind of I kind of gonna. I might need some help with it, actually, uh, like a cameraman. What's up, Realistic Fishing? What's going on, man? How you doing? Oh, I don't know if I'll be doing a drunk, uh, drunks. Oh, I sound like I'm drunk. I mean, it, I'm not even through my first beer. Jeez. Oh, there we go. That hit the spot. Okay, so uh, that is the advanced... And to recap, I'm being lazy today. I just got into town from uh, about a week and a couple days of uh, being away, and I didn't want to edit this video, so I decided to do it live. Okay, so uh, that's your advanced $150 value. That flag, the rustic flag, um, really bumped up the value of this box. So um, there you go. So let's move on to the pro. Oh, cool. Okay. Uh, $99 cost, $235 value. <clears throat> Live is more interesting because I'm destined to screw something up. So this is the rebranded customs CGI RFID blocking aluminum American flag wallet. Veteran owned, made in Powhatan, Virginia. I may have screwed that name up. Um, here in the great old USA, value is $84. 99 and that is right here what let's take a look at this uh what kind of wallets do you guys use you guys use a billfold like a leather wallet um you guys use some of the more modern ones what are you guys using okay Hey, Braden, <clears throat> we kind of need to talk about the whole fishing together thing, man. Um, due to like liability stuff, you know, I, I kind of, <clears throat> no, no mercies. Um, it's hard for me to, to, I don't really want to fish with somebody who's not like 18 or older just because, you know, uh, it's tough. Like if you were to come to a meetup or something like that, we can make something happen. Um, you're definitely welcome. But if it's just one-on-one, -on -one, 
I can't do something like that, man. Um, I'm sure, you know, you understand, but you know, when you get 18, we'll, we'll hit the water, bro. Okay. So this one is interesting. Um, it looks pretty cool, but it's pretty bulky. I don't know if I'm going to like it. I'm not sure. Um, hook, line, and sinker. What's up? Vacaville. So this is what I use. I'm not going to show the card. Oh, somebody's going to screen grab my card number. Um, I use a Trayvax, and I like it a lot. This is kind of fat. I don't know if I'm going to like it. It's got a little uh, money clip. It's got like a tension spring in here for your cards, all that stuff. Um, I don't know if you can see that. that. That's like a little kind of, it would be like a little spring essentially. It's just a, a piece of metal, but you slide your cards in and that's going to keep pressure on them so they don't just fall out. I used to use a billfold, like a big thick one, right? And I, I had back problems and yeah. Okay. Uh, Janiya 87. <clears throat> it was messing with your back. Yeah. So, you know, I switched away from one of those cause it really was hurting my butt. You know what I mean? And my back. Cause I drive a lot. I'm always in my truck driving. Um, so switching to the tray backs, I, I can front pocket carry it super easily. Um, and I could back pocket it, you know, all that stuff. The tree vax is awesome. Uh, I got this from my brother-in-law and my sister for Christmas and it's, it's been great. I just love it. Love it. Love it. I only take the cards. I really use I use my, take my company credit card, gas card, my debit card. I don't take my credit card around because, you know, credit cards are dangerous. Um, and my ID, some cash, uh, a medical card, and that's about it. That's all I need. You know what I mean? So, <clears throat> you know, I used to do that whole thing, like take it out of the back pocket, put it in my uh, center console of the truck, and then start driving, and I'd forget it all the damn time. So I had to go back out to my truck, you know, waiting in line at the grocery store and be like, oh, damn, I forgot my wallet. Um, so I, I like this. I just like it. Keplero wallets. They're pretty cool. Okay, I'll, I'll look into that, man. All right, last but not least um, is the Knife of the Month Club. This is the Pro Plus, $150 cost. They're saying a $335 value. Um, it's the CRKT Clever Girl. Um, and this isn't – I mean, CRKT is not really a veteran-owned company, um, but the guy who designed it is a veteran, a U.S. Army veteran, um, Austin McClellan. I might mess up that name. What's up, organic? <clears throat> and this is part of CRKT's Forge by War series. And I think this knife, the Rikiri from CRKT, I believe it's, is it part of the series? Maybe it's not. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head. But anyways, um, their Forge and War series is really cool. They take some knife designers who are veterans, and they they have them design some knives. And it's a pretty cool program. Some really great knives coming out of their Forge by War series. Uh, and the Clever Girl is one of them. And I, I own one of these. Um, I like it. It has a $100 value, $99.99. Um, it's nothing like super special as far as blade material isn't anything crazy. Um, so it's got a nice sheath. It's got the, this is a funky clip locking mechanism. Kind of torn on whether or not I like it. I've used it. It, it kind of works. Kind of doesn't work sometimes. But uh, here's the knife. And look at that bad boy. Isn't that kind of cool? Pretty cool blade shape. Nice handle. It's a big knife. Um, big handle. Decent sized blade. It's got that up sweep on it. This needs some sharpening. Um, it's not that sharp out of the box. Yeah. So needs a little touch up. But yeah, the blade profile is really cool. 
Um, <clears throat> G10 scales. What metal? Uh, what metal is this? I'm trying to remember. I can't remember. Oh, it, you know what? Maybe that's what it's from. Um, Derek, who knows the name, but I like this knife. The one I got um, was a little bit sharper. It was quite a bit sharper. This one definitely needs to spend some time on the stone. Um, so it, it needs to be messed with a little bit, but um, I like the knife. I haven't carried it a lot, you know, carrying a big um, EDC a large knife for me where I live, you know, it's not super practical. Um, and when I go camping or hunting, um, typically I have either uh, tops, uh, a tops knife or my LMF two from, from Gerber, uh, just because I, I really like uh, my tops knives, the cub and the field craft. Um, so it's, this isn't really something I would take for that. So, Hey, Marvin, thanks for stopping by, buddy. Really appreciate it, man. We need to hit the water soon. Okay, so that's that. Overall, wait, what have we got? 30% off. Boom. That's cool. And a 25% off code for Tacticon. So some coupons in there as well. <clears throat> Before we do anything else, let's go ahead and announce the winner of the other of the other knife, the DMF. Now I did carry this, guys. Um, I liked it a lot. Wanted to give something cool away though, but it did get a little scratch. I don't know if you can see it. It's in that carbon inlay right there. There's a little scratch. See right there, a little scratch. So you're not getting a perfect knife. Um, I wanted to, to carry it more. Once I saw it scratch, this, this carbon scratch is pretty easy. So a um, really big folder, organic, man. Um, really cool knife, I like it. But I uh, wanted to give away, um, you know, a, a couple knives and, you know, had a couple knives to give away. So let's see who wins this one. Let's play again. Okay, we got a few more new comments. Imagine that. We have four, four more comments. So let's pick a winner. Johnny Smith. Johnny Smith. J-O-H-N-N-Y Smith is the winner of the DMF tool. So here's the deal. <clears throat> if uh, the folks who won, if they don't get back to me with their addresses, um, if they don't get back to me with addresses and stuff like that, I'll have to redraw and we'll do that later. So I'm going to give them a week to reply. I'm not going to chase anybody down because ain't nobody got time for that. Uh, but congrats to the winners, and hopefully they get back to me. If not, we'll redraw, and we'll let people know. So now that that is all out of the way, um, about 30 minutes for this video, I do a lot of, a lot of talking. Ray wins the Ready Man Pocket card. What's up, 206? I think I might have a ready man card near me, actually. Let me bounce something off you guys. <clears throat> Let me bounce something off you guys. Okay. So when I was up camping, I took a trail cam. Um, it's a trail cam I got in a hunter's hall. Um, stealth cam. Seemed like pretty good trail cam. Got it in the hunter's hall. I took it up camping with me and me and my kids went out, found a spot for it. And we set it up 
to test it out to hopefully get some pics, right, of some animals. And um, we did. We actually got some uh, a couple cow elk walked past it up where we were camping, which I thought that was pretty cool. It was awesome to see um, the elk out there. Wasn't it really expecting that? I was wondering, um, I'm thinking about doing a video, uh, kind of a review on it. And, and I was thinking about doing a series and I don't know if it would be something that's interesting, but taking some trail cams just up to random places, hiking in, showing the hike in, um, showing where I would put it, why I'm putting it there, you know, the angles, all that stuff. And then coming back a week later or something like that, picking it up and going over anything that it might have snagged. I don't know if that would be an interesting little series to do. I really don't. Um, I wanted to get some images for a, a good review, just to show image quality and stuff like that stuff like that. What I'm thinking is I'm either going to do a series of it or I'm just going to go mess with it some more. Maybe this weekend, I'm, I'm hoping to get up and do some camping this weekend, um, put it up, hopefully get some more animals with it. Um, test out the video function because as a video function, um, change some of the image quality stuff so you can compare and just go over some of the settings and, and just use it more. I, I could take multiple trips make one video or I could do multiple videos and make a series out of it. What do you guys think? Jason says it sounds like something he would watch. Ray says sounds interesting. Now it's only interesting though if you if you get some animals. Like I mean if you don't get anything, you know what I mean? If you come back and it's just an empty chip or you know, you get squirrels setting it off or whatever. Um, that might not be such an interesting series. But, you know, that's that's how it goes, though, right? I mean, if you pick a good location and you see a lot of sign and, you know, that type of thing, it shouldn't be too hard to, to get pictures. I don't know. Multiple vids. Series. Sounds like a cool concept. Yeah, Steven, some jack wagon steals it. You know, that's always a worry. I, I would get pretty far away from trails if I did it um, and just get the, the longitude, latitude, you know, that type of stuff. Edgar Hall says go for it, multiple vids. Okay, okay. Um, I did see your comment, man. Um, <clears throat> we'll have to talk about all that stuff later, dude. Okay, so... Multiple vids, I think that's the way we'll go, and we'll just introduce it as a series. Um, maybe once a month we can can get some footage with it. Um, I mean, heck, right outside my office um, at one of our locations, I see deer all the time down in this draw area. It's a wooded draw with a creek. Do it by a nudist colony. What? What? Somebody would definitely steal it there. Um you know, I could put it down there because I see deer quite often down in uh, in this creek area. So we could do it, you know, test it out there a little bit um, when I go camping, that type of stuff. So I think that's what I'll do. Okay, so somebody asked a question. Okay, every time I go to read my chat, my chat disappears. It's just like, but then it repopulates. So, okay, here we go. It's back. Did you ever get a chance to do a field test of the Soteria throwable fire extinguisher? Yes, I did. I actually did. <laughs> um, actually, Ray, one of your messages got held for review. I'm going to go ahead and show it, but <laughs> I thought that's funny. <laughs> get me all flagged and stuff, Ray. Jeez. Um, I did... And it did not work as intended, but partially because of how I tested it. I actually, uh, Elk Camp 2017, I took it with me. And our final fire, we had all packed up, right? We were all packed up. Um, everything was loaded up. We had a fire going, though. Um, and the final fire, I went to go throw it out at the, on the final fire. And just because of how a campfire is, 
Um, it didn't really get it. And I, I kind of, I probably messed up, man. If I had like a, a, a big shop or some sort of like, if I had a lot of land to play with, I think I could do a pretty cool video on that throwable fire extinguisher. So anyways, I, I have the footage. I've thought about editing it up and you know, it's, it's just really freaking goofy is what it is. It's just totally goofy. It's not really the best shot video, but Hey, are any of mine really that great? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> Where's Matt? You talking about Yankee tanker outdoors, Matt? That guy, he's taking a break from YouTube. Man. Anyways. It did. It totally exploded. But it didn't do it in the right area. So, you know, you got a campfire logs, right? It came over and hit. And it took out some of the fire over here, but not the fire over here. And it's because of, well, if you think about it, like the surface area of a fire. If it was on a flat surface, totally would have put it out. But because it was on a campfire with, you know, multiple surfaces and angles, it kind of took out part of it, but not the whole thing. And a campfire, I mean, you're talking good embers, you know, all that stuff. That's something that's not easy to put out. I mean, we shoveled a bunch of snow in this little ring that we made. To, to get it to get it out um so that's how we had to put it out after the fail of the soteria test okay dude you know what man <sighs> let's see i got a lot of videos to edit but i could probably edit that one pretty quickly and i'll i'll try to have it up in the next two days how's that it did make for an odd tangent but um you know that's all good. It's always all good, man. What uh, You guys got any other questions? We're at 37 minutes. <clears throat> Unacceptable. Brayden, hit me up on Instagram if you got Instagram after, and we'll, we'll sort something out. Okay, dude? All right. Okay. Any questions or am I free to go? Am I, am I free to go? <sighs> okay. All right. So to recap my favorite items um, for the month, this is probably my favorite item. Uh, Old Glory, you know. Um, I've always wanted one of these. I, I've wanted one of the big ones, but they get pretty expensive. So I'm um, really stoked to have this one. Extra special that it's part of the Just One Project. Um, something that I can really get behind. And you know what, guys? <clears throat> ah, if you... When are you getting the AR-15U one? I don't recall that giveaway. Uh, anyways... Um, I don't know if, if you guys have any history with the channel and that whole side of the channel, the, the battle box side of the channel. I was pretty critical last year um, of the, the box that they did, the freedom box or whatever. Um, I was pretty critical of it. So part of my reason for being critical was they, they used a lot of these veteran owned companies, but there wasn't a lot of, there was some of it was just ridiculous stuff. Some of it was stuff I used. Um, you know, I don't know. This one, I think that they did a really good job getting some tactical stuff worked in here. You got the lube, you got the magnets, you got the gong. You know, you can always use a wallet. I think there was a wallet in that one, if I remember correctly. Was was there a bastion wallet in there or not? Was that a no, that was the EDC. That Bastion wallet, I used it for a while. It wasn't that good. Um, they had a DVD in there that was just, some of y'all probably liked it. I laughed at it. But it it was a horrible DVD. <laughs> that was horrible. Um, so I'm liking this one, you know? I like it. This is kind of like the only thing that's 
Well, there's a couple other things that aren't EDC tactical survival, you know, that type of stuff. Um, I really like this. I, I used the mug I got, um, the Black Rifle Coffee Company mug, quite often. So the range 15 was ridiculous, dude. I don't know why your message got held for review. Yeah, everybody was pretty upset last year. Um, I think that this was a great, great way to come back and be like, look, we're doing it again. We listened and it's better. You know, I, I didn't mind the cigar, but I understood why some people were fired up about getting a cigar. Going back um, to go with what I saw you uh, on the forums about the cheek rest. Oh, let's bring up the cheek rest so Lotus, the spirit driver, can can make fun of me. <laughs> Did I ever get it on my riff right? I don't like those things. I, I've never used one. Um, I've put them on before, and I just don't like them. Uh, it's just not my thing. So I didn't put it back on. Um, I, I don't know. It's going to make its way into a future giveaway. That's what a lot of this stuff, you know, like many of you know, I don't pay for these boxes. Uh, I don't pay for battle box and I don't pay for hunters hall. They send them to me. I don't get paid to do these videos, um, or anything like that. But because of that, it, it kind of makes me feel compelled to, you know, keep some of the stuff, use it, test it. But some of the stuff like the feather stick, or the knife, uh, the Sniper Blade Works knife, you know, kind of compels me to give some of it back um, because I appreciate you guys, that type of thing. So I don't mean to get all, you know, like <sighs> mushy with you guys or anything, but, you know, <laughs> that's what it does. Um, for concealed carry... See, here's the tough thing. Where I live in California, it's it's a uh, a May issue county, which basically means unless you're six, uh, unless you're sucking the sheriff's quack, you're not or giving him a lot of money for his reelection campaign, you're not going to get a permit. Um, unfortunately, that's where I live, so. I don't, I, it's something that I would love to do, but it's, it's just not realistic. So, um, so I don't really think about it a lot, but if I was, um, I, for concealed carry, I'd probably say a nine and man, I'd want, oh gosh, it, I guess it all depends on how you carry it too. You know, all of that's gotta be personal preference. Now I will say just between us uh, here it's, we're at the end of the live stream um the rules are pretty liberal if you are actively fishing or hunting. So I have been let me see how I should phrase this. I put a video out about 2 months ago and I got a lot of hate on that video. It was about poachers. Okay. Um, and a lot of comments that were, yeah, screw those places, Steven. <clears throat> I got a lot of comments that, yeah, take it easy, Derek. I got a lot of comments that were somewhat, uh, threatened threats. You know, I mean, basically they were threats. Um, and they were like, you could tell they were local folks, uh, who are making those threats. So, you know, I'm just thinking, all right, you know, something could happen someday. Um, so I got to be prepared, right? So I looked at the fishing game laws and it is legal in California to conceal carry a firearm while you are fishing or hunting or on your way to a fishing or hunting spot. So I have uh, been doing potentially that while I am fishing and hunting and on my way to and from a fishing spot. Okay. So that's just something to keep in mind. You need to check your areas. If, uh, 
if you're not in <clears throat> in the area. So with that all being said, I am actually looking at a um, a little little gun, like a pocket gun, like a 380 or something like that that I could put in my life vest. Um, so that's something I'm kind of looking into because they're small. They still, you know, most likely if somebody came up to, to rob you or something like that, you know, um, they're going to do some damage anyways. <laughs> you know, one of these days I might get swatted. Do not do that, Lotus. Do not do that. Yeah, you know, it's a decent little round. Um, a, a small platform pistol. Um, I, I like a lot of that because I could easily conceal it into my, my PFD and, you know, it be right there. The way I'm doing it now is I got to reach for it. Okay. And, you know, if you got to reach for it, it's probably not a great thing. So that's where I'm at. And I'm not doing it every time when I go out with other people, it, you know, I do a lot of night fishing, um, by myself and, when I'm night fishing by myself, a lot of times you guys don't even see the videos because it's hard to record at night, but that's something else I'm working on. Um, you know, you're by yourself, you're coming back to the launch or the levee or wherever and around these parts, not so much where I fish, but in like the North Bay, there's guys that are getting robbed when they're fishing. You know what I mean? People could just come up and steal their gear, you know, just straight up steal their gear. Now, you know, if I came back and hit the beach or hit the rocks and was getting out and somebody came up to me, I'd have to make a decision. If a gun was pointed at me, do I just give them my gear? You know, how do you play that? And that's something I got to do in my head, some mental training and that type of thing. And, you know, some physical training too of drawing and that type of stuff, but that's not here nor there. <clears throat> not really what, you know, I'm here to talk about. So um, but for me, for that situation, I'm thinking a 380 is going to be the ticket. I don't know. What do you guys think? Uh, I missed a couple questions up here. You still haven't smoked your cigar, Shane? That's crazy, man. Um, I believe I smoked it with Fireman Swanee when he and I went camping. The watch was pretty well received, and I do like that watch. Um, I'm not a huge watch guy. You hardly ever see them on me. Um, but when I do wear a watch, it's that watch, oddly enough. Sean Alino asked, how did you get into Cast King? I don't know if Sean's still here. Um... I had some casking gear. I liked it. Uh, I kind of knew some guys that were on the casking team. Started talking to them. And one thing led to another. And I got on the brand ambassador team um, for, for a while. I actually just got off. Um, I removed it myself because my work schedule lately has just been insane. Um, some of the stuff that I was asked, you know, that they wanted me to do. I just couldn't meet some of those goals and stuff like that. So I, I got out of that. Um, I'm still a fan. I still fish with the stuff. Um, but I also get other stuff as well. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at with casking. I, I like um, a lot of their stuff. I think the price point is perfect. Um, I also like... $200 reels though too. And now, you know, I feel like I have a little bit more freedom to, to go buy a $200 reel, fish with it, promote it or use it, explain it, talk about it. Um, and that type of thing. So, um, I left, we left on good terms. Yeah. Cast King braids. Great. You know, um, we left on good term or I left on good terms. I think, I think everything's cool with everybody there. Um, I still follow a bunch of those guys. Um, <clears throat> But that's just where I'm at. You know what I mean? Um, if you guys are looking for something and you have a question about casking gear, what might be good for you, what might not be, I'm happy to help. And I'll tell you, like it would tell you normally, you know, I'll, straight sh I'm a, I'll shoot straight with you. You know what I mean? I have nothing to gain from 
you buying a reel that won't be good for you for what you're using it for, you're going to be like, damn it, Chris, you suck, you know? So um, I'll shoot straight with you. There's there's good options out there. Hook, line, and sinker says, so I hear you like Lake Hennessy. I finally went up there for the first time. A great place. That is a great place. Did you fish it out of a kayak? What did you do, man? Um, I like that spot. It's a great kayak lake. <sighs> yeah, the cigar was all right. Fireman 20. Confirmed. Yeah, I took my kids up to Hennessy. Uh, we just got, I just, not we, I, um, I'm the guy that writes the checks, right? I just bought them a couple kayaks. Um, and we've been having a lot of fun in those, actually. Um, and we went up to Hennessy and caught bluegill. That's all we were going for is just bluegill. Had a great time catching bluegill up there. Um, did the whole, you know, worm on a bobber deal. Kept it super simple for the kids and, um, my son caught a, a pretty big bluegill. My daughter caught a decent one. She wouldn't hold her fish, though. Um, you just drove up there to check it out. It's a great spot, man. So it's good, good bass. I've caught crappie up there. Fun spot. Um, it's got a, I think it's got a either a speed limit on the lake or a horsepower limit on the lake. I think it's a horsepower limit. So you don't get a lot of glitter rockets just shooting around and, you know, that type of thing. It's a, it's a slow speed lake. So perfect for kayaks, canoes, that type of stuff. Small John boats do great out there with trolling motors. Cool. All right, guys, 51 minutes and 52 seconds. We're going to call it. Thanks for hanging out. Um, if you made it this far, you guys are awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This was just, um, yeah, you think you're done and 30 minutes later. Exactly. Right. Um, uh, thanks for stopping by Ray. Thank you all. Um, this was kind of my way of getting this video done and out. The video quality might not be what you normally expect from a battle box unboxing, but I had fun. Hope you guys did too. If you're watching the rebroadcast, let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about this format for future unboxings is it good is it bad i kind of don't like it um for unboxing purposes i think i could do a better video if i have time and the desire to edit the video ah googling and seeker take it easy man um you don't all get an ar steven come on man i, I wish i could maybe someday but uh there's a lot of legal hoops for that type of thing Hit that like button, guys. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Thank you guys for watching. And as always, thanks for getting out. What's this, Chris? <laughs> Later, video.